I'm cutting insulation and expansion gaps in the track on my layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and today I am installing insulation and expansion gaps on some new track on my layout. I have been working on an expanded section to my layout, about 12 feet that I'm adding to both the lower and upper decks of my layout. I've just recently laid the main line on both decks, but now I need to go back and cut in some insulation uh, gaps for the electrical blocks of this layout so that I can install my short protection and also for the sake of detection that I'm going to be installing later. I also need to install a couple of expansion gaps and some long straight sections that might be prone to kink as expansion and contraction happens through the course of the changing seasons. Now, I prefer to do this after the track is laid, but I'm going to show you exactly how I go about it and exactly where I'm doing it on this section of the layout as you can see how I set up my electrical blocks. Well, hey, if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. But now, let's head on over to the layout and I'll show you exactly what I did. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. I have had a number of questions over time about the insulated blocks on my layout, how long they are, and how I go about insulating them. To help answer that question, here is a diagram of the lower deck of my layout. The section I'm working on today is this area, the new expanded section of the layout. So let me zoom in here and rotate the view so we can take a closer look. As for the length of insulated blocks, I make each mainline block at least the length of my longest normal train. In my case, my maximum train length is two locomotives plus 25 cars, which means I make blocks of about 12 feet. Sometimes I make a block longer if there are few turnouts in the block and there's no reason why multiple trains might occupy parts of that block at the same time. I also always insulate all yard and industrial tracks from the main, but turnouts that are on the main are always part of the main line block. That said, in the section I'm working today, the main line connects the north end of North Yard on the left of the diagram to the helix going up to the second deck on the right side. The track marked in red is the main line. Now, understanding that it is insulated from all the industrial tracks that you see here, I also cut block gaps at the ends in these locations. This block is about 14 feet long. Long straight sections also need room for expansion and contraction through the changing seasons, changing temperatures, changing humidity levels. I cut an expansion gap here, approximately in the center of this long straight section. To be certain of good electrical connection, I like to place electrical feeders on each side of every turnout and, of course, on each side of this expansion gap. In this case, I installed feeders in these locations. I've made videos previously about how I wire track, and I'm planning on making a new video about wiring track for DCC soon. But when that video is out, I'll link it in the end screen of this video. When it comes to gaps for insulators or expansion, I prefer to lay my track first and then cut the gaps. This way I get the gaps exactly where I want them, I'm not dependent on wherever the rail joint happens to fall, and I can make sure to cut gaps in locations that are glued down very well to avoid any track displacement. To cut track in these situations, I use my Dremel motor tool with a flexible shaft attachment. Trying to cut with the Dremel itself doesn't allow the cutting disc to go straight into the track and leaves a crooked, jagged gap. But the flexible wand solves this problem and allows me to make a nice straight cut. I cut the rails with a heavy duty cutoff wheel. Now the phrase heavy duty in this case might be a bit misleading. 
because they will break, and rather easily if you get them even slightly twisted in the work or drop them onto a hard surface. When you know where you want to cut, the Dremel makes fast, easy work of cutting of the rails. I clean up any burrs with a file. For the insulated gaps, I fill the gap with styrene insulators. 40 thousandths thick styrene is the perfect thickness to fill these gaps. I cut a strip of styrene to the height of the rail, then cut short bits with my chopper and glue them into the gaps with gel type CA or super glue. I try to get the styrene as close to flush with the inside of the rail as possible when installing. I let the super glue cure thoroughly before proceeding. When the glue is thoroughly cured, I use my hobby knife and a file to carefully carve and file the styrene to match the shape and profile of the rail. I use my NMRA gauge to make sure that everything is in gauge and that I shouldn't have any issues with wheels or flanges in this area. I then test it with a piece of rolling stock. Finally, when everything looks good, I burnish the rail with a steel washer to heal any scratches in the railhead from the file. When complete, the insulator looks like this. Once this section of track is painted and weathered, it will be virtually invisible and it will keep my electrical block perfectly insulated. So that's got the electrical blocks in this lower deck all set up, isolated from the existing layout, the north yard portion of the main line, and insulated from the helix, which is two blocks of its very own with the two tracks that go up the helix. And of course, that'll all be insulated from the main line on the upper deck as well. And that upper deck section, I'll be doing exactly the way I did this one. Well, I mentioned during the video that I have made some videos and I'm making some new ones about how I wire my track and also how I tie it into the DCC system. Now, if I haven't got that new video made, you're going to find a link to some of those older videos about my DCC wiring in a corner of the screen right now. And when I get that new video made, you'll find it in the corner of the screen as well. Well, be sure and check out my Amazon Pick of the Week, my Micromark promo code, and all the other great links. They're all in the description down below. And if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure to join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you there. 10, Lizzie?